Hello, and welcome back. This is episode 42. How are we? Good. Good. Can't believe we're 42 weeks in. Quite mental. Um, let's just get in it, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Women's World Cup final has uh, been played, and uh, England narrowly miss out, losing to Spain. Um, <laughs> Greg, don't look so delighted. One uh, word for my friend Martin Tyler on my opinions. Go for it. Waiting. I'm trying. Oh, yeah! <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot I had access to the same board. Yes. Uh, yeah, so and the Lionesses were unlucky. Um, no they were unlucky, yes. Were they? Okay. Well, yeah, me and Kyle were out actually doing some shopping. And uh, we were watching it on his phone and uh, they had quite a few attacks at the end. They kind of looked like they were pushing, but just didn't have enough. And then, um, I just don't think they played well enough to win the game. Yeah, Mary Earp served the penalty as well. However, notably, the photos I saw, she was very much, very far off her line. Uh, I think there's one that shows off her line and one that shows on. I don't think it's definitive. The penalty was absolutely terrible anyway. I assume that it might not have been... Uh, quite true because uh, they have VAR now, so it would have fucked up. Yeah, exactly. Um, have we discussed how do you feel about them shooting it down the mic? It's a bit awkward. Oh yeah, I thought I think we said this last week. I'm not a fan. Yeah, it's just like, I, think I don't think it adds anything. I know it's a penalty for handball. You just let, let, went like that and put you in the penalty spot. But the, I think it was in the final for the penalty. She's screaming. She's like, "There is an incident!" And I'm sitting there. I've never seen that. We had some awful, so I I rewatched the highlights. Uh, but yeah, seem to be doing better than the men's team these days. What do you think, Joe? <coughs> Sorry, choked. Yeah, well, the men's team aren't really getting much done in regards to winning games or well, winning tournaments or getting far. So. They both have the same problem, which is they have a group of amazingly talented players. The final maybe sums it up. Maybe England women are slightly different and slightly better at this, but it, the final reminded me a lot of the men's team and that they had a lot of good players that just didn't play particularly well as a team. Yeah, it was kind of that was kind of summarizes the the Euros final a few years ago. Yeah, uh, there's ball. There's not big game players. Obviously, James left on the bench as well. Yeah, that was strange. Did think that was maybe due to a red card earlier on? That's what I thought. Was cool. Surely she should at least come on and gamble, even if it's last five minutes. You've got to gamble. She did come on, didn't she? She did come on. She did come on. I'm sure that she proves, did. That proves how much I paid attention. It was, for me, not the most exciting World Cup final. Yeah. Um, about 20 minutes or so. She didn't get a lot of time to do much. But... No, you thought she'd have played longer from how well she was playing. She just started. If some buts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As I said, I'm quite um, I was quite bored throughout it to be brutally honest. But I think I'm equally critical of various men's finals to say that the exact same thing happens. It's just a cut final thing, isn't it? Cut finals yeah. tend to be terrible. Except the men's 2022 one that was maybe a rare. Except that was it. Yeah. It was more entertaining. Yeah. To be fair, when was the last big cut final? You know, when you say like entertaining World Cup final, you I think back to. Spain and uh, when uh, thingy Iniesta scored an extra time again, that wasn't exactly was that a 1 0? Yeah, extra time, you know, but they went to extra time, so that made it exciting for me. I thought. Yeah, but then there was Goetze four years later as well that done the exact same thing, like it's just it's not hmm. exciting. Was it that was even more scheme? Yeah, I yeah, so entertained. Maybe not so much, but they they did well to get up to that stage. And could they go a step further next time? I mean, they'll have um some better players back. They'll have some more players in the team. Spain, of course, like uh, I think we should probably address the fact. Obviously, there was a rift um yeah. a couple of years ago with the Spanish coach. There was a group of fifteen rebels. Um, I believe five of them um came back. Like five of them were called back into the squad but the group of rebels like 
are some of the better players as well. And Barcelona have been kind of pretty dominant this year in women's football um, with a team of largely Spanish players. And um, that Spain team is only going to get better. I believe they've now at women's level won the under-17, under-21 and senior women's World Cups. It's pretty mental. I, what I was listening to was about the... It was kind of to do with the manager. Apparently, like, uh, there, was a, there was a big divide, like, kind of like we're saying in... Apparently, yeah. if you've watched the celebrations back, there's the players yeah. celebrating and there's the management, and there's it's like very much separate. And that's nice, though. So there's there's nothing worse than when a team wins a cup final for the manager to kind of take all the yeah. headlines. Yeah, that's fair. If there's, yeah. a rift, if there's a rift, there's a rift, but it's worked in their favour, so can he grumble? Yeah, obviously, I'm um, the goal scorer as well, um, being informed after the game. That was brutal. Yeah, that's her father one. had passed away, which is just yeah. It's nice, but I've described it as the best and worst day of her life. Yeah. And I think that's the most apt um description of any of that, to be honest. Um, I know what I mean, but it's one of those ones you can't describe. It's like she did it. You get what I mean, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I worded that badly, uh, but yeah, well, that's what it's saying. <laughs> so, aye, so well done, Spain. At least we didn't have to hear more and have to hear the argument of them one and another um, bank holiday for it. I mean, if they won, no. If England won. Let's make that clear. No, there are four countries in this this country. Listen to us. Go away. We don't care. I know. We want a bank holiday because Spain won it. I just wanted to see how well up you would get. Not too badly. If it's a day off work, I would take it though. No. We've got a bank holiday next week. I'm not off work though. Neither am I. That's not my problem. I am. So, um, let's move on. Any notable results this weekend? What do we think? Um, My first one's got to be Spurs Man U. It was probably the highlight of the weekend. Like the biggest game. Your orange ball, isn't it? Well, it was... He was getting a lot of slagging in the pre-season, obviously. But, I mean, pre-season really counts for nothing when you look. That's a good result for him, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Really good. It was three points over there. A close title rival. Yeah. A close rival for 7th, yeah. 8th place? Which one? Europa League. <laughs> um, uh, one of them is surely not getting into Europe. They're not very good. Neither team. I think they'll still find somebody to claw back. My United kind of seem to settle the ship later on in the season, to be fair. They did it last season as well. And they get the rub of the referees as well. Yeah, they do, to be fair. Um, Some would argue they should have had a penalty for handball. Um, That's just Fernandez. I mean, I was going to say quite how it wasn't given. I'm not entirely sure, but it wasn't. I'm happy it wasn't. Should it have been, probably. I'm happy it wasn't, because I don't like the law. I haven't I've, seen that one. Neither have I. His hands are up here. Mm, hands yeah. have to be done by his head, you know? A natural Do, position. But yeah, it's kind of a natural position because he's also got his foot out going for the ball. Oh, he's trying to like, balance himself. It yeah, I'm not just, like this all the time. It just comes down to interpretation of the law then of the case, I think. Yeah. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of fuss kicked up about it by everyone apart from Bruno Fernandes, who was rightly booked. Um, proving that just because you're the captain doesn't mean you can get around the new law, new laws we're talking about to referees. It does seem quite a hot head. She's a wee guy. I prefer a different word ending in head. It won't be said. Be we're, trying this, we're trying to get this PG now. Are we? I think so. <laughs> Come on, tell Kyle. Yeah, give me five minutes. I'll, he'll say something and then the F word just comes flying out. Turrets, yeah. turrets. <laughs> You're another not the castle. Uh, another result, West Ham 3, Chelsea 1. What do we think of that? When did West Ham score a third? Like in the last seconds. A penalty, won it? Okay. Well, I'm glad I got the score, right? Yes, it was. I forgot oh. that bit. Paqueta scored a 95th minute penalty. Yeah, it's, a bad, it's a bad result for Chelsea. That's what it, that's what it is. It is. It's quite funny, isn't it? It wasn't for my bloody accumulator. That's what it was, not it? Someone's getting a call. <laughs> uh, that would be me. <laughs> Got a text. 
I don't think it was me. I, I'm using my dad's laptop because I'm at home. So I have to claim to the call on my father's behalf. Is your is your refrigerator running? You better go yes. and catch it. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, uh, right. Three one. So yeah, I mean, bit of a sick one for Chelsea fans. Uh, kind of going through the rough patch carried on from last season. I would say quite funny. West, Ham, West Ham's fortunes improving, so to speak. Talking of terrible penalties, and um, Enzo Fernandez's penalty was not good. I've never seen it either. Not a particularly good penalty. Um, just as you thought Chelsea were about to grab a hold in the game and misses the penalty just before half time. West Ham come back out after half time, and even with 10 men, actually, they played really well. There was a lot of talk about Antonio's goal as well being a really good goal. I haven't yet to see it, but it was such a good finish. It was a screamer, as if I didn't get a grip. It was fine. It was an average goal. Um, what else happened this weekend? Everton are in the mud again. Do that without a smile on your face. Can't. Everton are in the mud again. I tried. Can't say I didn't try. Jordan uh, especially in the mud again, giving away one of the penalties. Who were they playing? I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, Aston forward. Villa. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that four 0 Heavily thumped. Yes. Oh, I convincing enough. Sure. Hey, Arsenal. Arsenal with a Monday night fixture and uh, for the seat. No, was that the week before? No, that was. That's no, Arsenal Monday night but, fixture just there. Yeah, it was Crystal yeah, Palace. Cool. One nil. Odegaard for anyone who had him in the fantasy football. Um, yeah. I'm upset because Saka handed him the ball. I wanted Saka to. He's my vice captain. What did Ramsey? Odegaard is my vice captain. Vice captain. I did very bad this week, but we'll come to the EPL stats later on. Yes, we will. Someone, That's Kyle's kind of responsibility. Kill, some people are more thrilled than others. That would be for once. I can't wait for tears at the end of the season. Oh no! Um, the that that again was again decided by a penalty. Um, it's not really like, soft. It, I think it's quite soft. Um, also a soft red card in that. There was a lot of talk about the first booking. Oh, why is he getting the first booking for time wasting? But it wasn't him. Like. Folks said, oh, Tommy Asu only had the ball for eight seconds. He did, but Havertz had the ball for about 20 seconds before him. Like, seen, it, it's seen a that. collective team time waste, and he happened to be the person holding the ball when the referee had enough. If anyone wants to have a go at the Tommy Asu booking, it's the second booking, which is probably a booking, but again, it's really quite soft. And on a booking, what are you doing? Yeah. you got to Silly keep boy. a cool head. Silly boy. How Man City beat Newcastle 1 0, I believe. I was waiting on someone to mention that. Uh, Newcastle played really well, felt really unlucky to get beat, actually. Um, Again, lots of teams are going to get beaten more heavily than 1 0 at the end had this season. I don't think Man City played very well. Newcastle stopped Haaland scoring. There's lots of positives to take from that game. Yeah. Are Man City as good as they were last season? Because they've not been as. Ruthless so far. Apparently they were fairly ruthless, I would say. Only three now. You thought they got a lot more as just three, but I never No, three's it. fine. Yeah, sure. Like a win's a win, isn't it? Ultimately, as I say, I thought they were quite lucky. Newcastle's very difficult start to the season continues this weekend as they play Liverpool. Well, moan, moan, moan. We'll see. You know, I'll see if it's like last season when you get. He managed to score after more minutes of the added time than was added on. Change the script. Right. So, we'll move up north of the border. In my garage, we watched Rangers 2, Morton 1, after Morton going 1-0 up with a penalty. Uh, but back to back on talk of dodgy penalties, neither of the penalties in this game was a penalty. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, both the given, Rangers run was... given by VAR. Both absolutely shocking examples of how not to use VAR. Once they finished 2 1, thankfully, but I was, when they went 1 0 up, I was a bit scared, so to say. But I uh, I mean, wasn't the best performance in the world. Last night's was a lot better, but I think we'll come on to that. Or do you want to talk about that now? On you go. What, what do you think about last night's performance for Rangers 2 2, of course? I'd, I'd take home. a draw. 
Greg messaged me last night saying was a draw fair, and I'd, I'd said yes. I think it was a fair enough result. Both teams had moments, and I think PSV look a lot better than they did last season when we played them at this time. Uh, obviously, I think yeah, it was a repeat. Yeah, it was repeat exactly, result. Was it not a two-two draw? Yeah. yeah, and then you had a yeah. one-one in Holland. Yeah, Tillman won the ball and uh, screwed it to Cholak, I believe, in the second leg. So think well, about some game. Hopefully, Tillman doesn't get the assist for the team this time. Unless it's a like a, he passes it back to his keeper. To be fair, I'm pretty sure that was off a goalkeeping error, and although it wasn't a goalkeeping error, the first Rangers goal came from uh, a back pass. Sorry, not a back pass. The goalkeeper put out to the centre back, him kind of playing about with it, and then Rangers pressing on. Uh, I have to say, I'm the first one to hold my hands up. Sima was absolutely rubbish up until that absolute wonder strike. I don't know if you saw it, cushion yeah. beautifully into the top corner. No one was saving that. I will say though, he appears to be like. None of the Rangers strikers appear to be any good. He appears to be the slightly least worst option, but it was as if signing Lammers and Dessers, both of which struggled to score goals last season. Lammers especially doesn't have a good goal record. Dessers, I think, struggled to score in Serie B last year. Um, well, what were you I don't expecting? Know. I don't know, but the Dessers' assist for the second goal was lovely. It was and lovely. If he can pull that out of the bag, I wouldn't mind him not scoring if he can set them as many up. I mean, do you really want that from the player who should be scoring all your goals? Like, I, no, but you look I at think that it... Rangers side, and I think the question is, where's the goals coming from? One, one surely got to score goals though. I think once once they get into this swing, they'll get a lot more than. There's also the third game, third fourth game. Their goal but... stats from previous clubs seem to indicate otherwise, though. Like, oh, I don't get why they bought those players. Surely they'd, be better, like, yeah, surely they'd have been better like spending some more money rather than spending money on both. Spending slightly more money on one. Like a slightly better singular option. Then you get the more of what no depth as well. You've got that argument. And then known Rangers will be injured within three games. I say the same that Doc Duke, whatever. He could have been garbage. Yeah. No, he was I mean step up. he was proven in Scotland. Okay, handle this in Europe. I mean, can Dessers and Lammers on this current evidence? Not really. I think they'll come good. Uh, yeah. sure, I would also sure, say uh, um, the other thing I read today on Twitter, and I really don't disagree with Todd Cantwell is not a Champions League level player. Todd Cantwell is a great player. I'm not having that. Todd Cantwell is fine against Scottish Premiership teams in Europe. He gets surrounded by three players, tries to do too much himself. We actually should just be playing a simple pass. But the he same time, and um, he was booked against Servet, and he was booked last uh, well against PSV, which was last night. We recorded this on Wednesday. Got booked in both games, both of which were for doing exactly the same thing, which was running at players in a situation where it really wasn't on, losing the ball, and then halving the player after immediately losing the ball. I do agree. The yellows cards are a bit reckless, and obviously make him back to bite with suspension wise. But I do think he's really set. I oh, know it was obviously he came in January, but he's he's got. He's got the potential. I think maybe decision making in Europe might have to maybe be altered, like you say, because obviously it's a different type of football. It's very, I think it's a lot faster. So, but in terms of player, he, he's he's good with the ball at his feet, and he showed that last night as well. Several times he gets it. And he said, "I know sometimes maybe he does overthink it, but he does come into situations where he just knocks it past them. Easy days. Yeah. So, but experience is going to help that. It's not the worst yeah. thing. At least, at least he's trying to not just be." Playing, you know, just try to be a bit more creative and create chances and such. Like, I I um, like Ken. Just, that that Rangers team just seems really underwhelming. They spent quite a lot of money this summer, and like in January, and I don't see what they've got quality wise. I don't think we'll come good. Sorry, I was going to come again. I think we'll come good. So I'll show you. But uh, Matondo, debate. Matondo, great finish. Great run and then great assists from Lammers, not Lammers, sorry, Dessers. Cedric. Yeah. Yeah, he's meant I've, to be Cedric. Cedric, it's Cyril, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I've seen, I've finally seen the um, VAR photo from last night as well to prove that uh, he's onside. And um, on the telly, he looked a mile offside. So that camera angle must be really deceiving at Ibrox. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good finish. Luke Dion, obviously. He's, Having a right go at Rangers in the media last year, that came back to bite up. He managed to get a goal in the 80th minute, which is pretty poor, pretty poor defending from a set piece yet again. 
It really was. Uh, is it the same? Uh, I can't believe it's the same Luke de Jong who played for Newcastle. Looked like he couldn't have a barn door. In Barcelona. He's all talk. I don't forgot he played for Barcelona. That's really depressing. Well, played I don't know if that's. I was going to say, I don't think he said anything this year, but last year they was pretty much saying that we're, he'd already beat us before the games were been played. I mean, to be fair, actually, I mean, I know we're going to probably talk about the other Scottish teams as well. Um, someone on Twitter, uh, if I find your name, I will thank you um, in the comments, um, has looked at the different players and the rankings. Um, so all none of the Scottish sides are favourites um, in this round. So you've obviously got Rangers playing PSV, um, Hibs playing Aston Villa, Aberdeen playing BK Hacken, and Hearts playing Pauk. Uh, if you base it on the ELO ranking, which bases on previous results of that team, um, none of the Scottish sides are favourites. Um, Rangers, PSV have a slight gap in quality, PSV slightly better. Same for all the sides, apart from Hibs, who are significantly different from Aston Villa. And I think that, um, you know, it says a lot about the financial disparity between the leagues. Yeah. Well, my, my kind of interpretation of it is that you think some of those Aston Villa players are probably worth more than the whole Hibs squad. Well, I said that. I, I reckon they've signed two. Like, they signed Pau Torres for some sort of reported about £30 million, and Diaby, who was about £50 million on his own. And between the two of them, like, each are probably at least one Hibs squad. Well, Diaby could probably buy a few Hibs players himself with his own wage. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're recording this on Wednesday night, and the Hibs game has already went. And uh, Aston Villa were, were 5 0 winners at Easter Road. So, yeah, can't say I think... I'm surprised anyone has it. Um, no. Both strength team. Pretty much was with the other Saying that, one change from the weekend. Yeah, I think they had a few players, like, players out, like Tyron Mings, for example. Yeah, he didn't play the weekend, though, either. Um, yeah, because he is injured. And I think it was Matty Cash who was actually the player who dropped out. And all the goals seemed on. to come from the other side. Um, yeah, Levine, I thought I think got three assists. I don't know who was playing right back for Hibs, but that kind of left wing for Aston Villa. They just absolutely manipulated it. I think it was was it Lewis Miller who ended up being the person going for Dina on a few occasions, and it's kind of unfair that Aston Villa at Easter Road can unleash a French international with fifty caps, who they still don't really rate and are looking to replace apparently. So it's pull out kind of three assists. Walk up under in the goal as well. Yeah. Martinez. He came off at half time due to an injury and also went in for the second half. He's in the actually, fantasy team. He better be fine for the weekend. Within the first few minutes of him being on, also in the second half, pulled off an absolute crack and save tipping over the bar. So, yeah, I don't, obviously, I think that's Hibs kind of out now, unless they can turn it around. But <laughs> I, I think 5 0 is probably, if you asked us before the game, what would you expect from Hibs? I reckon 5 0 is about yeah, what I would have said. It was going to be about when do Hibs concede the first goal? Yeah. You know, if they make it to half time, you might get a respectable result out. They conceded three before half time, they conceded one inside 20 minutes. As soon as you felt, as soon as Hibs conceded one, the floodgates were going to open, and they kind yeah. of did. I suppose they can now send out a younger, weaker team in the next leg and rest them for the yeah. Premier League. So it makes so sense. That's the question do you just give up? But if you're Hibs, do you do that as well? You may as well go for it, go in the second leg, make a name for yourself. That's true. I like to say, if, oh, it wouldn't happen, but like if by three, it made it a lot more respectable. But I, you, can't, you, you can't think Hibs are going to go there and not concede. I, co- I, I kind of hope I'm wrong for the sake of yeah. Scottish coefficient. But You've obviously got the other two sides too, Aberdeen and Hearts. So of the four sides, Rangers, Hibs, Aberdeen and Hearts, obviously two of them have played. How many do you think are going through? I, I don't say, think Rangers can pull it off. Hmm. I was going to say three. I think two. I think Rangers, think? Hibs, uh, Rangers, Hearts, and Aberdeen all should all go through. I'm not convinced. I don't know which one of the three you mentioned Kyle was going to slip up, but I think one of them will. I think Aberdeen might be fine. I'm more Aberdeen worried about. I think. I think Rangers the thing about Hearts. I think Aberdeen is they've got they've got a safety net. If they don't win this one, they're they're still in the group stage of the conference. Yeah. Although it's less money, it's money that they wouldn't have had before. That's a bad place to be. Like this complacency can set in there. You're maybe better with a we really need to win this game. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to say. I think I think that might be their downfall. However, you never know. They might spur the one a wee bit more. Keep it tight and money. 
keep it tight in the first leg, Aberdeen should be fine. Yeah, I th- I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it out there. I think it'll be Aberdeen and Hearts that go through. Ah, Rangers are going through. Well, Rangers oh. obviously got guaranteed Europa League football regardless, but yeah, that Champions yeah. League money would be nice. I, I don't know why. I, I, I can't decide if it's because... Well, I think Rangers are going to have to play some good centre-backs at the weekend because uh, Ross County away is a tricky fixture. Jordan White has a knack of scoring against Rangers. Um, and then, again, you've kind of got old firm after the PSV game, which yeah, is not a, ideal at all. Not a good run of fixtures, to be honest. No. You're a good team you to adapt to these things and overcome them. But they do. Obviously, uh, the other half of the old firm Celtic are not going to shout out yet as they're straight into the group stages due to winning the league last year. However, a bit of a dodgy result for them at the weekend as Kilmarnock beat them 1-0 in the League Cup. What do we think about that? Amazing result for Kilmarnock, isn't it? Mm. They've beaten both halves of Glasgow. Yeah. I was about to say, credit, credit where credit is due. Yeah, within the space of about two weeks, they beat both old front teams at home as well. It's almost as if, and hear me out, Derek McInnes actually knows what he's doing. Potentially. I think, he, I think he's, he's I would say he's always got results here and there picking them up but I think come on it's going to be in a run of form with it. I think that they could finish third and a wee, a wee boost for them having European football next year would be good money in the bank for them If Aberdeen do not finish third I'll be very surprised Depends if they get Europe or not Europe might scupper them Well they're getting, they're getting Europe, Europe they're getting, anyway. Yeah, sorry how far they go, I mean. They're getting conferences and they'll get Europa League. Yeah, I... I think Aberdeen should finish third with the squad they've got. Um, I've got two two videos to reference this week. One of them being a uh, the Kilmarnock fan. I don't know what country it was in. but uh, and, I, and, and I think it was Spain. And I, there's a lot of Celtic fans watching it and he's kicking about shouting Mona Kelly and they're getting raging at him. I enjoyed that one. And uh, I also enjoyed there was a Celtic fan podcast. I saw a clip on Twitter that uh, apparently one of them said that Man City won the treble last year and they lost the League Cup, so it's still on for Celtic. Yes. Well, I suppose they could drop down. They could drop down into the Europa League. They'll have to win a, a knockout leg. Well, not leg. A knockout round for that. I don't think they've done that since what two thousand three. I'm not saying. Could that. be wrong, but I believe it's somewhere along those. Along that time frame, so, ah, you yeah. never know. It, it is still on. They they are right. It's not finished mathematically. Finished realistically. Finished probably. Well, Rangers still not win the Champions League at that rate. That's in that. It's way you're going to talk about it. Yeah, Rangers could win the Champions League. If Rangers win the Champions League, I will be shirtless on this podcast. Please, Please. Michael, for you. I don't know. Please <laughs> God. <laughs> Please God, let PSV win. <laughs> no. No, well, that's in the group stages. We don't have to win the whole thing. You can just win. I could. I would take a wee, maybe quarter or semi final. Wee semi. No, no. Um. Bring the level down. Uh, Someone said PG before. I know. Well, yeah. I said it. He said that. Is Brendan? I think it's Brendan and Hot Water already at Celtic. No. Fans don't seem happy. I mean, of course they don't. It's Celtic. If you don't want every game, the fans aren't happy. Ultimately, they've won, what, three trebles in a row? That's wrong. Two, one. Rangers on the squad. Is it just the one? No. Christ. Where have I got that? Wow. My mind's definitely all over the place. They've won one treble. They've won God knows how many league titles now. Ready to overtake Rangers. Um, I'm going 56 this year, so it's fine. Are you? Yes. Clip it, tweet it, whatever you want. You'll be six points behind after the old firm. No. So. Um, yeah, I don't think... They had to lose one at one stage. Probably not how and when they'd want to lose it. Ultimately, it means they can put more effort into Champions League football because it's one less competition for them to worry about. Hearts yeah. have a decent chance of winning a trophy now. Or to be fair, th- there was a... There was or a Rangers like, fan podcast that I saw and they were saying... I think the, the first hurdle always, always has been the League Cup, especially recently for Rangers, seeing as though we haven't won it since about 2010, I think, something went all of that. Um, but with Celtic not being in it, it's kind of... It's there to lose. It's in our own, I wouldn't say it's in our own hands, but at the same time, you're right, you can't write it off the lights of hearts and 
Hearts and Aberdeen and such. If one of them, like, it's perfectly primed for if Hearts and or Hibs, well, Hibs probably won't, but the fact that they're not going to be in group stages, it's perfectly primed for Hibs if they're not in the group stages and Hearts if they don't make it. Like, that's a competition they can properly go and attack because of when yeah. the competition is played. So we're going into the quarterfinal with the fixtures Rangers Livingston, Kilmarnock Hearts, Ross County Aberdeen and Hibernian St Mirren. Can we also say it's mental that if you're one of the five teams in Europe to win the League Cup, you have to win four games. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't agree with the group stage thing. Yeah, I don't agree with the League Cup. Just get rid of it. These are wee teams that just for the big teams again, don't it? It does, but I don't... I don't uh... So that's also really good for the B teams. So just give them some money instead. Like the more I think about it, I know we kind of discussed it in the preseason, but I don't know if it, I don't like the group stages. I don't like the way that works. Just the Queens never got through this year. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> to be fair, if it was Queens and it was fixtures, we'd have went out in the first round on our luck. Yep. Well, well we would have. We could look at it. last year. We got to the Challenge Cup um, semi final. We had an all right draw this year. We've been running against Partick away, one of the favourites for the championship. Like, and we'll beat them. Still win, to be fair. Away as well. Even better. Yeah, exactly. You have more faith than me, Kyle. So right, well. Good. Will we move on then? It's just the time for the. Just mean Robert winners of the cup, I think, Kamarok as well. Can't write them off. Yeah, that's Beating sure. Celtic. Once again, like, if, if Rangers get put out at some point, it's wide open. Yeah. A, new, a new winner. Yeah. We'll see. We will see. So, are we, we move on to the game again. There's a returning game. Yeah. Yes, it's the return of the transfer game. And after my crushing defeat to Kyle in the category game last week, after a, what I can only say it was a shocking performance, uh, and sorry to my no fans, um, the transfer game is back. Reminder of how this works. Um, five players, uh, for you will get a chance to guess the player. So for five points, you get one clue, which is the year and the fee. For four points, you get two clues, which is the position. Three clues for three points, which is the nationality. You then get, for two points, the club they left, and for five points, the club they joined. Um, Robert and Kyle will get a guess after so long, uh, after each clue, and we will see what the totals are. So, are you both ready? Yes. Yes. So, the first player this week, the transfer was in 2022 for £47.5 million. Pounds. Holland. No. Sorry, wait a minute. <laughs> I've got the soundboard this week. <laughs> Gonna be a bit repetitive and all you hear is eh, 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 eh. sorry, set again. Forty seven point forty seven point mm. five million in twenty twenty two. Hmm. We've not got all day. I can't think of anyone just going. Right, we'll move you on. Uh clue number two, Kyle, you're back in. Uh twenty twenty two, forty seven and a half million pounds for a winger. Sterling. Four points well to Kyle Raheem Good Sterling answer. from Manchester City to Chelsea. So that is 4 0 to Kyle. Uh, second one moved in 2019 for £3.5 million. F.E. Ambrose. No. <laughs> Kyle, you're back in. Also, no, I'm not going to use the buzzer. I'm just nah, going to say yes or no. if you get it correct. Yeah. Um, 2019, £3.5 million pounds for a defender. Conor Goldson. No. Oh. John Sutter. Also no. Uh, 2019, £3.5 million pounds for a defender from Sweden. Philip Lander. Three points to Robert. Four three. Damn it. Philip Lander. And his move from Bologna to Rangers. Right team, right position. Wrong player. Yeah. Uh, so it is 4 3 to Kyle. And the third one was in 2017 for £12 million. Slow money. 
2017, 12 million pounds. Oh, I don't know. Pass. That's a pass. Uh, 2017 at 12 million pounds for the striker. Morelos. No. Is it Musa Dembele? It's not. Um, 2017 at 12 million pounds for a striker from the Ivory Coast. Oh, okay. No. Well, I said Drogba, but I mean, that's, I think I'm a few years late. That one. That's, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's also. Just, that's also I don't know. Yeah. So just keep going. Uh, 2017, 12 million pounds for an Ivorian striker who left Manchester City. Morning. Two uh, points. Uh, that uh, is Wilfred Bonnie's move from Man City back to Swansea, um, where he picked up the number two shirt. So that is two points for Kyle as well. Takes the score to 6-3. And on to the fourth player, who moved He's in 2010 for £18 million. Pounds. Ozil. No. Yaya Turi. Also no. Uh, 2010, okay. £18 million. Pounds, midfielder. Kevin Prince Boateng. No. Um... Who did you say? Oh, no. um, I don't know. Mine's nope. gone. 2010, £18 million, pounds, a midfielder from Argentina. Max Rodriguez. No. Mascherano. Correct. Mascherano's transfer from Liverpool to Barcelona um, makes it 6-6. Six, six. Mm. So that's three points. It is six points apiece going into the final player. So I had a tie break. I don't have to use my tie break because this is the de facto tie break, uh, which is 2014 for £10 million. Pounds. Hmm. Hmm, I feel like I should guess, but I have no idea. So... Fernando. Uh, what do you say? Fernando. No. Uh, say that again, 20... 2014. <laughs> Ten million pounds for a goalkeeper. Better check. Mentally. No. no. Uh, twenty fourteen. Ten million pounds for a goalkeeper from England. How many pennies? Say that again. Repeat. Can you repeat it? Sorry. Yeah. Twenty fourteen. Ten million pounds for a goalkeeper from England. Who's the first though? Robert is this week's winner. It is Fraser Forster for his move from Celtic to Southampton. And that makes the total this week nine points to six in Robert's favour. That's twice Robert's won this game now. I think that's more times than he's won the category game now. Robert is a massive the fan game. of this game. It means nothing, but do you want to see how you would have done on the tie break? It would have been 2022 for £9 million. Pounds. Ken. No. Hmm. Nah. I'll move through the tiebreaker quickly. 2022 for £9 million pounds for a midfielder. Can't well. Nope. No, I don't know. No, you'll get it now. 2022, £9 million pounds for a midfielder from Scotland. Again. No. Gilmore. Yes, Billy Gilmore. Moved from Chelsea to Brighton on deadline day last year. That is the transfer game for this week. And it stays with me now for the predictions. Yes, um, it does. Robert, do you want to use an adjective to describe your performance in last week's predictions? No. I'll, I'll, I'll use a word then, zero, uh, which is the score that you managed to achieve last week of the predictions. Uh, me and Kyle managed to receive two points. Kyle and I both predicted that Livingston would beat Air United. Um, Kyle also predicted that Airdrie Ross County would go to extra time, which Ross County eventually won. Um, I predicted that Montrose would get beaten by Cove Rangers. We're back to Robert's pick of the games this week. Uh, and the first game up, we've spoke about one of these teams already. It's Motherwell versus Kilmarnock in the Premiership. What do we think? Um, yes, I agree. Kelly. <laughs> That's three Kellys then. I think Kelly can capitalise on their good form. 
Championship, it's Air United versus Dundee United. I think this will once again be an away win. I'm going for the Arabs. I'm, sens I'm sensing a draw for this one. Me too. Both going for a draw. Uh, Interleague 1, Sterling Albion versus Kelty Hearts. Um, Sterling have started the season off not too badly. Obviously got beat by Falkirk. Uh, but I think Sterling will do pretty well this time. And I think it will be a win for them. I also think Sterling Albion are going to win. Maybe a three for the Binos. Three for the Binos. Uh, League 2, we've got 4th Athletic versus Bonnie Red Rose. Uh, I think I am going for the 4 far, as Kyle likes to call them. At home. Maybe that too far. I'm going draw. You're going for a draw. Uh, Northern Irish Premier this week, we've got Cliftonville versus Larne. Larne obviously very heavily backed financially against one of, kind of Northern Ireland's big old clubs. I'm going for the team that Rowan Ferguson plays for. I think he still plays for them. And that is Larne. Uh, I'm going to go for a draw. I'll go for Larne, I don't actually know. Uh, and then the last game this week is in the Bundesliga, which is Borussia making that back versus Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach played out a very, very entertaining 4 all draw uh, last weekend against Augsburg, I believe. And um, I don't think this will be their weekend. I think Bayer Leverkusen will beat them. I'm going to go with what I've been feeling this whole... Yeah, I'm back for... Say that again. I'm going to draw. He showed something, didn't I hear me? Yeah, I didn't hear what Kyle said. Watching Gladbach. You're going for Minhin Gladbach. You're going for a win for D4. Uh, that is the end of the predictions for this week. Uh, do, are we doing an update on the fantasy football? Yes, I've just got it up here. So, um, the three packs invitational. Uh, shout out to Kyle, who is currently sitting top and number one. Uh, I, I guess to it, who I don't really know who it is, but Cyril is doing well. So, Kyle's on 144. Big Cyril's on 142. And uh, Kevin Pagan has dropped down to third and 134. I'll give a notable shout out to fourth place, who is uh, Greg Nobbin, Howie the Lads, with uh, 134. Oh, and I'm down at 13th with <laughs> 95. So, you know what? It's good to keep the numbers up, but uh, just you wait. I'm coming. So, Are you? Uh, shout out. Kyle, I'm coming for you next week. Sure you I'm quick in yeah. the boots. So, you should be. Make sure to keep checking those teams. I think I've done it once and I don't know if I did it right, so yeah, I've got about four injured players on the bench, or three, I don't know, anyway, we move, but thank you very much for watching, this has been episode 42, make sure to come back next week, do apologise to Spotify, it was late from last week, because technical difficulties, but YouTube's up, so there's no excuse. Yes. We're hoping to rectify that issue, as it's still ongoing, but hopefully this will be up on Friday at 12 o'clock, as always, so enjoy. See you later. Godspeed.